In today's video, we're going to tackle this particular animation. It's got a sci-fi feel to it and can be used in a myriad of applications. It's a variation of a similar technique that was used in this particular video. You can check that out if you haven't already. So let's start right off. In our default scene, we're going to hit X and delete the default queue because the entire effect is going to happen on planes. So we're going to add in a plane by hitting Shift A, plane. We're going to rotate this plane on the X axis by 90 degrees and just scale it up by 4 by hitting S4. Now let's begin the actual texturing of this plane. So let's go to the rendered view over here and let's click and drag from the joint of these two windows to create a new window and change the type to the shader editor. Tap N to remove this. We'll also go to our output properties, change the frame rate to 30 frames per second, make the end frame 150 so that it's a five second long animation and we're going to make it perfectly loop. So now let's go to our actual material properties and click new to create a new material. Let's go down on this material properties, go to the settings and change the shadow mode to none and the blend mode to alpha clip. Now let's actually deal with the material. So we're going to use the same technique as that video mentioned earlier. So we're going to search for a gradient texture. We're going to hit control shift click with the node wrangler switched on so that we can preview what it looks like. Then let's change from linear to spherical. Now let's go ahead and hit control T with the node wrangler switched on to get the texture coordinates and the mapping coordinates. Now let's change from generated to UV. Now let's go ahead and add in a color ramp next to the gradient texture so that we can change it from a sphere to a ring. In order to do that, we're going to change the type from linear to constant and we're just going to drag this in and then add in a new marker by hitting the plus, taking this and just dragging it up and there we have a ring. We can make the ring larger by just moving this to the side and bringing this in like that. So that gives us the size of the rings. So we can see only a quarter of the ring, but we'll convert that in a while. First, let's deal with how we're going to get it to repeat. So we're going to search for a separate XYZ. We're going to place that in right over here. Then we're going to search for a combined XYZ, and we're going to place that right over here. We're going to plug the X to the X, the Y to the Y, and the Z to the Z. Then we're going to search for a math node, and we're going to change the type from add to modulo, and we're going to change the value, the second socket value to one. We're just going to place this in between the X values. Similarly, we're going to shift D to duplicate and place it between the Y values. So now when we actually change the scaling on the mapping node, you'll see that we can get a nice repeating pattern. So we want to scale this value using a single value. So let's search for a value node and plug that into the scale. Now, since we always want it to be scaled by integer values only and not random values, we're going to search for a math node again, and we're going to change the type to round and just plug that in over here. So now as we change the value, we get a perfect number. But now the thing is that we have to actually change these from quarter circles to full circles. In order to do that, let's go ahead and just add the 0.5 value over here. So let's shift this out of our way for now and just search for a vector math node, place that in right over here and just add or subtract 0.5. So now that we've added it, we have the circles, but they're a little bit too large. Remember that we have to add or subtract 0.5 on the X and Y axis and leave the Z axis as it is. But because they're too large, they're going outside each of their individual boxes. So we're going to have to change the color ramp accordingly so that they fit within their box. So here we have our circles. So now when we change the value, we get our circles. So now let's go ahead and decide whether the circle will be visible or not. In order to do that, we're going to create a noise texture controlled by a Voronoi. So let's search for a noise texture and a Voronoi texture. We're going to take this rounded up value and plug that into the scale of the Voronoi. And we're going to take the position and plug that position into the noise texture. We're also going to change the randomness from 1 all the way to 0. So if you actually control shift click the noise texture now, you can see what it looks like. However, let's take our color ramp, change this from linear to constant, and then just drag this back a bit till we get a number that we like. Now, in order to prevent clumping like this, we have to actually increase the scale of the noise texture. And in order to increase the scale according to the scale of our spheres, we should be using the same value. So let's take this value, the rounded up value, and just multiply it by some number like 20. So let's search for a math node, take this, and remember if you have the node wrangler switched on, you can shift right click and just create a joint node. So we can plug that in there, change this from add to multiply, and then take this value, make it something like 20, 
and plug that into the scale. Let's reduce the detail down to zero, the roughness down to zero as well. Every whole number gives a perfectly black value. Very weird, but all right. Let's just put a random value above 20 for now and just reduce this. And that should select the number that is selected. But now you see the thing is that this Voronoi node and the spheres that we made don't won't be aligning because of this extra half that's present along these edges. So we can actually see that when we mix these two together. So if we were to take these and just mix them using a mix RGB, switch it from mix to multiply, take this color, plug it in here, then take this color and plug it in to the bottom socket, socket, change the factor to one, and then control shift click this, you see that they won't align. So in order to get them to align, we need to add 0.5 to this location. So let's actually go to the X and Y and just type minus 0.5 and that perfectly adds it in. But you see, you still get this half circle over here. So in order to make that change, we're actually going to change the scaling down to the Voronoi texture or to any texture. We're going to add 0.5. So search for a math node, change this from keep it at add and just add 0.5 and that should fix it. So now that we have our selection of circles, if we change, if we increase the value, we should get smaller values, smaller circles. And there we go. I want lesser of them to be selected. So I think that looks fine for now. I guess this is fine. The next thing is we want a few dots to also appear instead of just the circles. And if the dot in the circle appears in the same place, we want the dot to be inside the circle. So we can just add that to this. So how we're going to be doing that is we're going to take the same gradient texture, but we're going to change the actual color ramp that it is following. So let's duplicate this gradient texture and the color ramp, Shift D, duplicate it. Take this value itself, plug that into the gradient. But now instead of having this black, we're going to keep this or we're going to remove this by clicking that minus and we're going to reduce the size a lot by doing that. So let's control shift click this to see what it currently looks like. All right. Maybe you can reduce the size of the dots even more by backing that in. And now we also have to select a random variation of these. So we can go ahead and do that by taking another version of this noise texture plug and changing this from 3D to 4D so that we get a different value. Let's just change the W by some amount. Take the position, plug it into the vector, use the same color ramp, should not make much of a difference. Take the color, plug it in, take this color and multiply it in the same way with this new noise texture and color ramp or gradient texture and color ramp. So shift D, plug this in right here, plug this in right here. And now when we take a look at it, Ideally, we should get just a few dots. There you go. Now you see there's only like two dots. So what we can do is we can just reduce this a bit and now we'll get more dots. So I think this number of dots is fine. So in order to now mix these two, we're going to mix them using a mix RGB, except we're going to change the type from multiply or to add. So now it's on add, change the factor all the way to one. Plug this in here, plug this in here, and take this color and put it into the emission strength. Also, shift right click to create a node and take that and plug it into the alpha. Now, shift A, search for a math node, change from, from add to multiply, multiply it by some large number like five. This is what's going to control the actual bloom. Plug that in, change the emission color to whatever color you like. So let's go with something like this green. It looks pretty sci-fi and control shift click the principal VSDF. So now that we have this set up, we can also switch on bloom, change the intensity to something like 0 0.02 and also clamp it at four. And then we can go ahead and play with this value maybe make it 50. Let's also go to the world and then just change the color all the way down to black. So this is what we now have. Now let's go ahead and give this an array modifier, change from relative offset to constant offset and change the distance on the X to zero and just increase it on the Z to maybe five units. So that should create another version. Instead of five, let's go with two. Let's take our camera, Alt G and Alt R to clear location and rotation. Rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees. So we see that it's pointed in the positive Y direction. So we're going to have to make this minus two. And now let's take a look at what we see through the camera. 
gy so that looks all right now let's go ahead and increase the number of array counts so let's just increase this to something like 10. now in order to make this looping we're going to take this array and just shift d y and just move it by that many units so now that should be all right now let's go into our camera view take this camera let's change the clip start to 0 0.01 and also in the timeline go to frame 0 hit i location go to frame 150 and it's at the start of this particular array so just hit shift s cursor to select it now let's take our camera shift s selection to cursor and then hit i location then over here hit t linear so now when you actually play the animation you should get a perfectly looping animation and it's really that simple now in case you feel like the center is getting too bright because you can see way too far back and you can see all of the different planes. An easy way to actually fix that is just by adding a plane that's going to be black, probably three or four units in front. So let's go with Shift A, Mesh, Plane, rotate it on the X axis, rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees, scale it up by maybe 10, or maybe scale it by 20. So that's a scale of two after the 10. Grab it on the Y axis, just bring it back to maybe there, and then Shift Select the camera, Control P, set parent to object. So now when you actually play the animation, it's going to be perfectly looping. And and you can change the color of these to whatever color you want. You can have a sci-fi blue, pink, red. It's all up to you. Completely saturated, desaturated. You can always change the scale to your liking from the value over here. So you could have like really small ones or you could have really large ones by giving a smaller number. But overall, this is the effect. I hope you learned something in this video and I hope you can have a lot of fun with this effect. The possibilities are only up to your imagination. I think the best part about this is just figuring out how you can use your nodes to create different effects. So go ahead and have fun. I'll see you in the next tutorial and until then, stay creative.